Hey guys, what's going on? I don't have what I wanted for you this week because I got sick and my workflow went to like a screeching halt. Don't worry, it's not the coof. It was something else. Lucky for you guys, I already had this hatch system developed way over a year ago. If you were a patron, you already had it because you're awesome and you helped fund my whole channel, including really funding this project now, which is completely relying on fan funding and from my store stuff. So this is where we get to just do cool things, including making the lightest hatch system ever, and that would be this one. At a DIY level, I don't really know how you can beat it. I also demonstrated the usefulness of how well this is going to work over a year because it went on my boat. In fact, the footage that this is from is actually from my boat, but it will transfer right onto this project for any sort of John Yak, Tin Yak, Yak Killer, whatever you want to call it. It'll go right on there because we do have pretty good successful use of the system. And I'll talk to you, about, talk to you a little bit about uh, where it really peaked. And as everything, when we develop something, we always modify and make it a whole lot better. And on this system, it'll be way better, like a lot better. Shout out to my patrons and YouTube channel members because you are an even bigger giant chunk of this whole deal, which is why you had all this stuff over a year ago. Shout out to Chris Simmons from Senate John Boats who challenged me on Facebook in our group saying that he could uh, defeat any sort of like frame design I had with popsicle sticks. And he kind of was successful a little bit. Like his video is up here, you should check it out. I think it was, uh, he did a pretty good job. So without further ado, let's get into the tape. All right, so this is just angled aluminum. This is 3 4 inch angled aluminum. This is what we use to piece together the hatches and the side terminal hatches here. It's a pretty easy system because it requires no advanced brackets like our fully boxed system in the initial Gen X. This just requires angle, tactfully bent and cut and put into place. We are able to bend it down the side because of the flexibility of the angle. And you can also score it if you need to down sections, which we also do later. But we're essentially just cutting pieces of the angle and then joining them across. We're holding it in place and we're just templating it right there on the spot with no extra cardboard stuff, no back and forth templating. You put the system in there just like this and then you pull it out. You have it traced on a piece of sheet metal and you just got the sheet metal out, stick it right on there. And you can grind and sand a bit if there's any abnormalities, but other than that, this was really easy to make. This is an older system I used, 1 8 inch uh, standard rivets, so I'm kind of trying to grind them down because I know they'll show through the turf. This is like super entry level when we first started to do the system. If you have the option, you can also use tubing because the kit comes with both. You can also use 3 4 inch tubing to straighten it out. In fact, that might actually work a little better when it comes to making the joiner section for the hatch to open because that's what we're doing right now and we are taking the hinge that comes with the kit sticking it right in there and that's what eventually joins the hatch to the whole piece we cut out for the side panels and it's all just intricately linked in there we just bend and pull and rivet the aluminum However we need to, it just it's it's fairly simple and very quick because you can just do it right there. And you can pull it out, reposition it, doesn't quite fit, pull it back out, reposition it again, stick it on there until it all fits good in your eyes, and then just trace it out on the aluminum. You can use one or two things. I recommend a circular saw with a Diablo blade. And it seems to cut the aluminum right quite nicely. A lot of other people also just use metal shears, which it's pretty good, but if you're trying to get inside the aluminum sheet like this so you don't have to waste it, the metal shears become very taxing where they kind of need a precise line so you don't just start wasting pieces of aluminum. That's our first trace template. Here's our first one, and there it goes right on. Pretty seamless. It's not the fact that this is just a crafty way to make an aluminum panel. That's not even really the big benefit. The big benefit is this thing doesn't weigh in anything. Like zero, it's lighted. This is where it really exploits the, the, the sheer lightness of what aluminum can do for you. You can actually really see it. 
not just the fact that aluminum lasts forever, it's just the fact that it's obscenely light. And you don't have to commit to anything right away. Like if you cut something and you try and piece it together, then you have to go back and cut it again. You can literally stick this all in there and assemble it all and just use like these little adjustable clamps while you're on there at the spot. And then just put it all together right there on the spot, rivet it together on the spot. Right here, we're sticking that hinge onto the hatch lid and we're just doing it right there. Notice that when I bent the angle around to make the hatch lining that the back part where it's actually cut and joint we put that against the actual hinge and that'll just give it strength there a little bit of extra strength that it needs because you're going to need a binding piece to connect the hinge why not just go ahead and do it to the side of the hinge that way it's out of the way it looks a little bit cleaner because uh, this was my first attempt at doing this there had to be a few adjustments but you see we're just kind of doing those on the fly this little cutoff wheel, I swear it's worth its weight in gold. All right, so this is where I feel like this is my boat after several months of use where I, I beat it and abuse it and I do whatever I gotta do. This Amazon turf surprisingly is not I mean, other than it's getting its work in, I stopped caring about keeping it clean. I just wish I had chosen a different color. So this is the end. This is the angle bent. It's actually cut with the sheet metal over it, and it's double layered. Snow cam, we have snow cam all day on our site though, different colors, that's also grooved. So it's double sided. That actually cuts down a lot of heat that actually gets into the compartment. Pretty happy about that. We also ran half inch tubing. That's the one thing I didn't show you in the deal is we ran half inch tubing for under supports which fit underneath here pretty tactfully. Left enough room so that it cleared the dry hatches. Here, I gotta come back in here and clean all this up. But this, this just works so well by itself, I haven't I haven't really paid too much mind into to cleaning it, but it's, you know, my stuff's been out here. As you can see, it's not the best day. It's been raining forever, and this stuff is just bone dry. The whole system's bone dry. There's like three generations of different stuff in here, but it all works really tactfully. So this works. This actually works extremely well. And considering the, the, the span of the hatch it is, I mean, the under supports are really, they're paramount. So the half inch, the half inch tubing in the two sections is still pretty light. And so I'll probably be tactfully doing this in the, in the, the John Yak, the exact same way up, especially for bigger hatches. Because the rest of these, they have these major hatches, including this one. These are all the fully box frames from the Gen X, and this is well, theoretically Gen 7. They're so much lighter and maybe not as maybe not as uh, strong in in terms of stiffness because of the angle brackets and the tubing jointed that uh, we ran a significantly less pounded hinge. Like you can get a 50 n or a 40 n strut, so only like a, a eight or a 10 pound strut max, where we're using 20 to 22.5 and up for all the other hatches. Is simply it's just overkill. Now this is. Maybe one of the newer ones, I was kind of rushing this. So this is what you got to be pay attention to. When you do mount the hinge to the side panel that you make, make sure the hinge is raised up, like it's up more, so that it, it peaks at least equal to or over the turf itself. That way you don't have any binding. Because this one actually, well, it doesn't bind that bad. But if I would have raised it a little bit more, I could have gotten complete clearance. Where I messed up here, though, is I added no under supports. Got a little cocky. Actually, I just rushed this. I'll be honest. I think I just rushed this panel. I didn't even take this. This bracket was just supposed to be a uh, like a, a template supporter bracket until I can get it out and get it traced, and I forgot to even take it out. And I forgot to put under supports in here, and I didn't even EVA foam it here. Kind of some slacker stuff here. And as a result, this happened. You can see where it bowed and kind of crunched out, and it did that right there on an edge. So make sure there's a leading edge that the hatch can sit on there for support where it can't just slip over. Because what happens is we stepped on this and it bowed in because of no under supports and it flexed out here. And you know, when I go to returf this, I'll probably actually fix this entire hatch. This one came out actually really good. We for, we remember to do the under supports. This is my day box and I use this out of like a spare piece of angle. This is where I got the idea, but this is my first initial running one. But the hinge in here is like way in there. Look how deep in there it is. So that's, that's a no good. That's like super deep in there. And because of that, this is 
that's as far as it'll open without giving me a lot of problems. So if you want to open up and you don't want to even put struts on these, you don't have to worry about it. You want it just to bend all the way and lean against your, your gunnel, then move that move the hinge higher up. Other than that, it's fine. I mean, you want to look at some tubed ones. These are our Gen X ones. So these are the tubed ones. And those are pretty strong too. Very strong in structure. So if you just don't feel like the angle is going to cut it for you because you're a little heavy or whatever, you can do the tube ones with the brackets. They are heavier though. So if you're like trying to go all out and lightness is the key, then you know, Gen X is still gonna be as lighter than pretty much anything else you're gonna use except for Gen 7. So this is still a good suitable alternative and you can do this, just it just takes longer. It's not as easy to put together and it is more expensive, but it is definitely worth it if you're gonna do a bigger boat like this. I, do, I wouldn't do a boat like this out of Gen 7, like not all of it. Not all of it, especially not for like the payload of people I have on at any given time, but for like a yak killer, like a single person, boat you're going to have in uh, not the most rough conditions. I mean, like you're talking about like rivers, creeks, ponds, like Gen 7 is going to do it all day. Because of the already much more improved design that we have of this system I just showed you going forward into the Yak Killer, I do expect it to have none of the issues this one had and be completely where it needs to be in terms of lightness and all that stuff. It's going to be there. So you stay tuned and just wait for it because it is coming. The next though we're going to be tackling a few of the lingering problems with the John boat which is the transom and the paint job which have problems. Also check out my other channel DIY culture it is there and I love it. Eh. I think this is it's great. I'm demoing it now and I'm pushing it forward in this design because I know people are going to try and replicate it and that design has been on there for over a year. Over a year and as long as you follow everything I did for like the first hatch I showed you, which was the best hatch. And all your hatches are pretty pretty much come out flawless. They should come out great. It all comes in the system with the Gen X kit for the John Yak. So it's pretty, it's pretty nice, pretty seamless kit. Stay tuned for the series, guys. It's gonna ramp up.